All right, so today's assignment, we are actually going to create this piece of pop art. And how we're going to do that is by using the program Photopea and doing crazy amounts of adjustments. So let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to do is create a cool piece of pop art. And you just saw what that looks like. So let's get started. So the first thing we go file, open, and we go grab the image that we are going to be working on. So the first thing that we need to do is take this image and get rid of the pieces that we don't want. So we want to cut out the face and we'll get rid of the background. A couple ways to approach this. We could mask it. Uh, we could try and make a selection. But I think our easiest way to do this one is to uh, put a mask on it, use a brush, letter B on your keyboard. And if you're not sure, it'll take you right here. So it's on the pencil. We'll make sure we're on the brush tool. There we go. And since we're on the mask, which is white, we're going to paint with black. And we're going to make sure that it is 000. That is good. And since we're on the brush tool here, let's soften the edges and make the brush a lot bigger. There we go. And we're just going to clean this up. Now, it's easy to get rid of these outer spots. But as we get closer to the hair, we should make the brush a lot smaller. And I like to do many clicks with this. So I'm using a trackpad. If you're using a mouse, it's just as easy. Here's one little trick. I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger. I'm going to click once. I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to move without clicking to another spot. So now I'm holding the shift. I already clicked. Click once and whatever is in that straight line will disappear. So that's looking pretty good. Let's take the hardness of the brush, make it a little bit harder on the edges so that as we approach the hair, it doesn't disappear in a weird way. Control minus, control plus, plus, plus. Let's just zoom in here, clean up this edge a little bit more. Now you can see I'm not taking out the piece that's just underneath Control zero, I think, and control minus, control minus. I think that looks pretty good. So now the next thing we need to do is we could click on the mask and say apply layer mask, or you could click on the mask and go up to layer, raster mask, apply. So now we have nothing in the background other than this original image. Um, so I'm going to actually step back because I want to keep that. There we go, so we've got our background there. So I'm going to duplicate this image by going Command J or Control J. And here's my original image. So I'm gonna go on to the mask itself, right click and say, delete the raster mask. So there's my original image. I'm just gonna hide that. We'll actually use that a little bit later. So with this image selected, we're gonna do a couple things. The first one is we're going to do a gradient map. Now, the gradient map, we have to make sure that it is set to black to white. That should be the first one there. If it's not black to white, just make sure that you select black to white. So it'll either be the first one or the third one. Once that is set, we would then do a threshold. Now, the threshold, my view of the threshold is I see for, for my image, one threshold isn't enough. So there's the eyeball looking good right here at about well, 41. I think the hair looks good oh, somewhere in there also, like, oh, right about here. At about 31 for some hair, 41 for the eye. This side, the hair looks really good at about 80, and then the mask looks good at about 150. So for me to make that work, I have to actually build four different images. So I go back here, and I say, okay, this is where I'm going to get the best hair, right there. So at 29, I select my top layer, and I go Shift, Control, Command, E, and that merges everything up. For the PC, it's got a four key combination that is a little bit different. Let me turn that one off. Select that bottom layer again, 
move this over and I'm just looking at the hair. So right about here, this hair here, I'm gonna move that into the 80s. There, I think that looks really good. And I'll go Shift, Option, Command E, merge that up, turn it off, select the bottom layer again, and I'm gonna move this up to about 150, that looks pretty good to me. Shift, so I, now you'll see where it says threshold, this is highlighted in blue. So just click on the threshold layer one more time, the highlight disappears, Shift Option Command E, and that merges that up. So with these layers, I'm going to change the order, and you'll see that I have the eyeball on this layer, I have the hair on this layer, and I have the mask on this layer. So pretty straightforward. So the eyeball layer is my base layer. So I can actually select the threshold, hold the shift key, and select all the way to my background copy and hit delete. They're gone. I don't need those anymore. Turn on, we'll call this one hair. We'll call this one eye. And we'll call this one mask. On the hair layer, we're going to put a mask not the name of the mask, but a mask. And we are going to go make sure the mask is selected, edit, fill, and we're gonna fill with black. Make sure you're on the mask and just cover the hair. There we go. Now the next one, the mask layer itself, we're gonna do the same thing. Make a mask, edit, fill, and we're gonna fill with black. Make sure the mask is selected using a brush. We're going to paint the mask in on the mask. It's pretty funny, eh? The mask on the mask. Now I went a little bit too far, so let me zoom in here. Hold the space bar, move this down. Switch our brush to paint with black. Let's make the brush smaller by using the bracket keys. And we'll just paint this out. I don't mind the little line there. That'll help define. Use the space bar. You can just keep clicking so that if you think you're going to make a mistake, you don't have to go back very far. Click once, hold the shift key, click again, click again, click again, and you can see it just follows that line. That looks pretty good. Control zero, or command zero. Okay, so I think that looks pretty decent for my overall subject. So I'm gonna go shift, option, command E, merge that all up, and I can get rid of those layers right there. Now the next step is to make a layer underneath in the middle and this will be called background color and we'll go edit fill and let's fill with a custom color and you can see i've got a bunch of colors that are on here i'll pick red click ok and click ok and now red fills the background so it looks like i have a little bit of work to do on my subject layer. So my subject, I'll select it. I'll put a mask on it because you can see right here. Let's do this. Command plus. We'll zoom in. Spacebar. I didn't do a very good job right here. So we need to paint with black on the mask and just paint this out. And I like to be somewhat accurate because it will come back to bite us. This is pop art. So we'll just have a little bit of fun with it. All right, that looks pretty good to me. And let's just reveal right through there. Okay, control zero. Okay, so our background looks good. Now, 
select the background area. Uh, you know what, let's right click and apply the, the layer mask again. So there we go. And let's make a new layer here and we're gonna call this layer as it's right there. This will be colors. So I'm gonna work my way from the outside in. That way the colors will make a lot of sense as I'm putting them down. So I'll just back that up. Oh, and I can see I've got one more issue. I missed it. Right here. Oops. There we go. Command Z, my mistake. I have to put the mask on it. Paint with black. And you can see this choppiness to that line. You're like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. But if you go to the brush tool right here, take the spacing down to 1%, then everything gets nice and smooth. There we go. Nice and smooth. See, that's the way you do it. Nice and smooth. So I'll just curve this over. Make that look. Doesn't have to be perfect, but had to be better than it was. Okay. So on our colors layer, we'll pick the foreground color, click once, and let's pick some of the vibrant colors that are already here. So we've got a green, we've got a blue, let's go with this teal. And I'm gonna paint the mask teal. So just gonna zoom in so that I can clean up this edge. Let's see, right click here and apply the layer mask. Here's the problem, it's a very simple one. The subject needs to be in a blend mode like, oh, linear burn, let's try that one. There we go. So our colors show through. Pick on, pick colors. And now, oh, there we go. So let's zoom in again. Spacebar. And our goal is to just click, click, click. I found that when I use Photopea, if I click once, it does a pretty good job. If I start moving it around, I found that sometimes the mouse kind of moves where it wants to, rather than where I want it to go. So let's just get the edges here on the mask. Avoid everything else, just stick with what you believe are the pieces of the mask. Command minus, there we go. And zooming in, I think is a big help for this because it's hard to stay True, oh, command Z. There we go. So I just push out towards the edge. And if I, if I think my brush is too big for this, I can always use the bracket keys to the right-hand side of the letter P. And I can see a little bit of error there, but really, like, there's really no defined perfect edge here. So we're gonna do our best. And we could screw this up here, I'll show you. I'll just make a line right there. And you're like, hey, that's not good, Mr. Burns. And you're like, you know what? You're right, but I can fix that. Control Z. I can fix that. So I'll show you why I'm not too concerned. So there's my mask. So I'm gonna click on the foreground color and I'm gonna pick the next color and I'm gonna go with this crazy pink. And I'm gonna paint that through that space. And let me zoom in. And I'm just gonna touch the top of the teal, just like that. And notice, as I scroll into that blue, the teal, or sorry, scroll into the teal here, I can make that just disappear. Almost looks like a wheel rolling its way up, doesn't it? But it's not a wheel. It's not even magic. Okay, and I'll show you. So I screwed up. We can fix that. If I just hold the Option key and I click on the color right here, 
So that's the color that gets painted. So if I click on this color and I'm like, oh, I have to fix that. Then I hold the option key down and click on this and change the brush size. I could just roll through here, just like that. And right through there too. And right through here. Boop, 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 boop. So we just clean that up as best we can. We just clean that up. There, I'll take that one. I own these ones there. So I'm going to do that. Not sure if that's going to be hair color when I'm done or not, but we'll find out. So I want to go boop. I think, oh, control Z. I think I want the teal through here. So that's looking pretty good, very different. So I better hold the Alt key, click right here, and we will paint a little bigger than the head into the hair space, just like that. So that's looking pretty good. Now the next one, we're gonna paint the hair. Double click on the foreground color. I'm gonna pick yellow, click OK. And here, We'll deal with that crazy mistake. Oops, Control Z. Now I could try to be pretty precise and I think that actually might work to my advantage. So I'll, I'll just make the brush smaller. So less mistakes, the better. I'll click once right here. Go up right here to the outer point. Click once, click once. You can see that that piece gets colored in. Clicking through here, that looks good. There we go, clicking. I think that's looking pretty decent, actually. I'm not surprised, but it's kind of nice just to see it come together, like it's got its own life. There we go. Make the brush a little bit bigger. Let's see what this looks like. So that's not background right there. So we need to color that in. Space bar. Move right over here. All right. I think that looks pretty darn good. Now, if I zoomed in on the eye, I think I could actually use a little bit of yellow around it. But I don't want that at 100%. Oops, on, Z. I think what I would like to do, Command Z, oh, we got to go to this layer here, is pick the color. Let me just see how this looks. A little tiny bit of yellow around it. I think that looks good. And same right in here. Like just a little tiny bit of yellow in there. And I'm not sure how much, but I'll just go with that. That might be a little too much in that eye. So I'll hold the option key down and I'll just clear that away and leave, there's yellow, leave the yellow in there in those two spots. Okay, I think that looks pretty decent. Command minus. Now we're almost done, believe it or not. So I take my background layer and I'm gonna go Control J and duplicate it, move it all the way to the top. And this layer right here, I'm going to go image adjustments and I'm going to, oh, let's do the gradient map to it. Now the gradient map needs to be black to white. See how the yellow is here? It's because our foreground color is yellow. So go to the third one, just click that you're done. Then we're going to go to filter, filter gallery, and we're going to pick, oh, let me just hit the X up here. You got to make sure that this is black. So we'll just hit default right there. That we leave it with black as the foreground color, white as the background color. Go to filter, filter gallery. And here we go to photocopy. And there we go. That's looking decent. And we're going to have a detail pretty high maybe about 15. And let's just see what we could do with our darks. Yeah, okay, we can leave it like that because we can always adjust the opacity a bit 
in the program itself. So I think if we turn that off, that's looking pretty decent. Um, but with this layer on and selected, let's change this to multiply. And let's bring the opacity of that layer way down. So it's just a little tiny bit showing through, like a little tiny bit. So there we go. So we've got some eyebrow and we've got a piece of pop art. I think that looks really cool. So what we would do at this point is I would go to the top layer and go shift option command E and we get that layer all built. It's all good. Then what we would do is turn that layer off. Go back to my subject layer and we're going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer that's underneath. Let's bring this all the way down. Isn't that crazy? So here we've got a very intense looking image. So now we click on our background layer, shift control alt E, turn that layer off, go back to our hue saturation adjustment layer, move this into a different world. This is where we were, was about here. So we're gonna go crazy. Let's go all the way to the end here. Select the background copy layer again, shift control option E, turn that off, we need one more. So go to your hue saturation adjustment layer, move that. What colors look good? Well, we don't have red as skin, so I think that looks pretty decent. Go to your top layer, background copy again, shift option command E. Now we have the four layers. So all four of these layers, if we hold that top one, hold the shift key and select this other one right here, we can go edit, transform, scale. And up here, it says 100%, 100%, turn on the icon and go 50, and they all go to 50%. Let's use our move tool and move this right to the, oh, I guess we gotta, oh, we can. So we'll move this right to the top corner. And now, auto select is on. So we click that top layer, drag this down, drag this over. Oh, it looks like we have one problem right there. Drag this down. All right, so this layer somehow, the hue saturation adjustment layer, one, two, three, four, this one looks very different. Okay, so we can solve this. I'm gonna show you what we'll do. We'll turn these other layers all off. I'm gonna grab my hue saturation adjustment layer and I'm gonna move it right. Let's do this, move this one up. So the only one that it's gonna affect will be this bottom corner. See how it's the same right now? And now it's different. Okay, I think that looks good. We'll just go Control E, merge that down. So we are done. We have completed a piece of pop art and that's all we had to do. Your turn.